This screencast is going to look at how to run and interpret the results of a MANOVER analysis. A MANOVER is similar to an ANOVER except in this case we have more than one dependent variable. So we are looking for differences in two or more dependent variables. In our data file we have four variables. We have competitive level where there are club, elite and regional athletes, behavioural disengagement, social support and effort. The research question we are trying to examine is whether there are differences in coping strategies, so behavioural disengagement, social support and effort are all examples of coping strategies, between the different competitive levels of athletes. So is the amount of coping strategies used different depending on your competitive level? This is an example of a one-way manoeuvre as there is one independent variable of competitive level with three levels and three conceptually related dependent variables in the three coping strategies. It is also possible to run factorial manoeuvres where we are looking at the interactions between the independent variables, so we would have more than one independent variable. Also, it is possible to add a covariate into the analysis, and this would become a mancover analysis, which would be similar to an ancover, however, we would have multiple dependent variables. As with other statistical tests, before we run the main manover test, we need to consider the assumptions of MANOVA. The assumptions of one-way MANOVA are similar to those for one-way ANOVA. However, there are three further assumptions which we must consider. The first is that for each group, the correlations among the dependent variables, so among our coping strategies, should be similar. This is called homogeneity of covariance. The second assumption is that each dependent variable has similar variances across all groups. This is known as homogeneity of variance. To check that we have satisfied the assumptions, we will look at the results of tests in the main output. So for the homogeneity of covariance, we will look at the box M test. And for the homogeneity of variance assumption, we will look at the Levine's test. The third assumption of MANOVA is that we have multivariate normality. For information on how to test this assumption, please look at the screencast for testing the assumptions of multiple regression. To run the main analysis for MANOVA, we are going to go to the Analyze menu, select General Linear Model, and then choose Multivariate. In the box, we want to select our independent variable of competitive level and move this to the Fixed Factors box. Next, we want to select all of our dependent variables, so behavioural disengagement, social support and effort, and move these to the dependent variables box. Next, we want to select plots. Here, we are going to select competitive level and move this to the horizontal axis box. This will create a graph showing the mean levels for each group, for each dependent variable. Click Add and then click Continue. Next we're going to select Post Hocs. Here we're going to select Competitive Level and move this to the Post Hoc Test 4 box. We are going to select the two keys Post Hoc Test and this will further probe potential differences among the three groups on each of the coping strategies. Next, click Continue. Finally, we are going to select Options. 
First, we want to select the overall and the competitive level variables from the factors and factor interactions box and move these to the display means for a box. Finally, we are going to select the boxes for descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power and homogeneity tests. Click continue and then OK to run the analysis. One of the first boxes on the outputs is the descriptive statistics, which give us the means and standard deviations for all the dependent variables for club, regional and elite level athletes. So for each level of the independent variable. The next box we want to look at is boxes M test of equality of covariance. As mentioned earlier, this checks that the correlation between the dependent variables is the same at all levels of the independent variable. For this test, we want that the significance value is above 0 0.05, indicating a non-significant finding. As we can see, in this case, the significance value is 0.636, indicating that we have met the assumption and can proceed with the rest of the manoeuvre. The box for multivariate test tells us whether the combination of the dependent variables is different across the levels of the independent variable. The F value we are most interested in is Wilkes Lambda, and as we can see, this is significant as the significance value is below 0 0.05. This indicates that there are differences in the levels of the dependent variables across the competitive level of the independent variable. The partial e to squared gives us a measure of effect size and the observed power tells us the statistical power in the study. The Levine's test of equality of variances box tests the assumption that we have homogeneity of variance in our dependent variables. As we can see, the significance values are above 0 0.05, indicating that we have met the assumption. The box for tests of between subjects effects tells us if there is a difference across the competitive levels for each of the individual dependent variables. As we can see by the F and their subsequent significance values, there is a significant difference in the levels of behavioural disengagement and effort across the competitive levels as their significance value is below 0 0.05. However, there are no significant differences in the level of social support across the different competitive levels as the significance value is 0.4, greater than 0 0.05. By looking at the post hoc multiple comparisons box, we can see differences in the dependent variable for each level of the independent variable. So we can look at the differences between club and regional, club and elite, and also regional and elite. When comparing club and regional in the levels of behavioural disengagement, we can see that the p-value is 0 0.051. This indicates that the differences are marginally non-significant. However, the p-value for the comparison between club and elite is 0 0.012, indicating that there are significant differences in the levels of behavioural disengagement between these two groups. The p 
p-value for the comparison between regional and elite is 0.937, indicating no significant differences between these groups. As the values were non-significant for social support in the tests of between subjects effects, it is not necessary to look at the multiple comparisons for this variable. When we look at the mean differences between the groups for effort, we can see that the difference between club and regional is significant as the p-value is below 0 0.05. The difference between club and elite is significant as again the p-value is below 0 0.05. However, the p-value for the differences between regional and elite is 0.98 indicating that these groups do not differ in the amount of effort that they employ. The plots give us a graphical representation of these findings, showing the significant difference between club and elite, However, despite the large difference between club and regional athletes, there is no significant difference in their amount of behavioural disengagement. When we look at the plot for social support, it may appear initially that the differences are quite large and therefore may be significant. However, we need to take note of the scale on the y-axis, as in this case it is very small. Plots in SPSS may sometimes be misleading, as the scale in which they are plotted against is not the same across all plots. That is why we need to look at our significance values to check whether any differences are statistically significant. Finally, we can see that club level athletes use much lower effort than both regional and elite athletes. However, the difference between regional and elite is not statistically significant. When reporting the results of a manoeuvre, we want to report the results both for the overall test, so the multivariate effects, as well as the effects for each independent variable, so the univariate effects. For each of these, we should report the F value with their degrees of freedom, the P value, and the partial U to squared. For the multivariate effects, we should also report Wilkes Lambda. This concludes the screencast for MANOVER. We have shown how to test the assumptions, how to run a MANOVER, how to interpret the results, and how to report these results when writing up our findings.